Hey guys, welcome to the next installment of our Channel Mum Meets series. I'm SJ and I am en route to meet Deborah James, aka Bowel Babe. I am heading across London town in a taxi to Deborah's house to have a chat with her about how she is finding battling cancer and being a mum all at the same time. So let's go. So thank you so much for having me round. It's so nice to see you. Hello. Quick fire rounds. Mm -hmm. Beach holiday or city adventure? Beach holiday. One thing you can't live without? Wine. <laughs> <laughs> Babies, toddlers, tweens or older kids? Um, older kids. Mm -hmm. Coffee or champagne? Champagne. G-string or big pants? Oh. Big pants. Celebrity male crush. Tom Hardy. Mum crush. A mum that everyone will know. I have like I love Steph Douglas. So you are a mum living with cancer. What does an average week look like combining those two things? My priority has to be my medical care, and there's not really a pattern to that. Uh, right. Even though. I've just finished a regime of chemotherapy, which has gone on for the last year. I will have um, one or two days a week where I do pretty much nothing. I write a weekly column mm -hmm. um, for The Sun. Now I'm up in Manchester a day a week um, recording our podcast. Um, so throw that into the mix as yeah, well. And that's called? Uh, that's called You, Me and the Big C. Seeing my children and doing regular stuff. But my life didn't look like that a year ago. No. It was what was a year different. ago like? My before cancer life, I was deputy head teacher in the secondary school. Okay. And I loved it. Um, I love working with teenagers. It's probably a question you've asked yourself a lot. Is there anything you would change about pre cancer life, post cancer? Yeah, so being really honest with you, I have my priorities all wrong. I was the kind of person that didn't want to do a job. Um, unless I did it properly. Uh -huh. It kind of meant that I would be somebody at three o'clock in the morning who gets up and does her emails. I don't think I ever really switched off from it. And I think as a result, therefore, I I missed out on, um, I never went to sports day. I never went to school plays um, for since my children have been born. I went back to work four months after the birth of each child full time. Honestly, um, it was the cancer diagnosis that that really made me realise that there are more important things to life than Ofsted. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I got diagnosed just before Christmas 2016 um, with um, a six and a half centimetre tumour of my bum, basically, and um, the ring fell silent. <laughs> um, and then my life totally changed. What do you think when you hear about women avoiding their familiar tests? Asked me two years ago, I was one of those women. Yeah. Now, because I've seen it, it like first hand, um, the difference that early diagnosis can make, um, I'm the first person knocking on the door at smear test because if my cancer had been caught six months earlier, my prognosis quite possibly would be a totally different ballgame. Wow. How did you prepare yourself and your children for discussing that diagnosis with them? What yeah. age were they at the time? So they were seven and nine at the time. Yeah. I don't think there's anything you can do to prepare your kids for telling them that you have cancer. But I think you can be really honest and open with them. They know mummy has cancer. I let them read everything that I write, if they want to. What inspired you to start sharing your cancer story? I think for me, um, when I was diagnosed, it annoyed me that the first reaction that people say is, um, oh, but you're too young, it shouldn't have happened. Right. And I was vegetarian, I've been vegetarian for 25 years, so I don't fit the mould for anyone that should have bowel cancer. Right. So for me, it was very much about, you know, well, changing those, those misconceptions. Right. I think there's lots of people out there who are blogging and doing fantastic things. What I found is that it was very breast cancer. Uh huh. Based. Yeah. Which is amazing. Amazing. But that didn't relate to um, what I was going through because yeah. the treatment that I go through is very different to breast cancer. And how did Bowel Babe come about? <laughs> I just thought it was the polar opposite name to um, you don't really think of poo as being sexy. <laughs> we get a lot from your Instagram account. What do you get? back from sharing. I get back a lot of um, amazing messages from people who are just like, thank you for sharing your story, or from people who are newly diagnosed and are scared. Like when you are 
told that you have cancer, the word cancer scares you. Is there anything you don't share? I share a bit of an insight into how scared I get, but I don't think I fully share just how scared I can be. What would you tell another mother who just, if you were sat down with her and she just had a cancer diagnosis? Yeah, so I would say it's okay not to be okay. So it's okay to be scared. There's no amount of reassurance that you can be given and nobody actually knows um, you know, how your cancer is going to develop. Make sure that you are with a great team of people So and question everything. Mm -hmm. So if you're newly diagnosed, go, if, if it feels right for you, because I know that not everybody does this, but go and become an expert in your cancer. And surround yourself by people who are examples of how you can live with cancer um, and you will realise that it's tough but you can do it. Thank you so much for having me and for chatting to us at Channel Mum. Oh, thanks for having me. Check out all the other Channel Mum Meets videos in this series. There's lots of other inspiring mums just like Deborah. Thanks so much guys and we will see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.